Welcome everybody to a Striatech hosted uh, journal club. My name is Thomas Münch and I am one of the founders of Striatech. In our journal club series, different scientists present projects and new data um, highlighting the use and the applications of our Optodrum device. Today, it is a great pleasure for me to introduce uh, Julius Bayer Mzomba to our journal club. Julius works at the Université Laval in Quebec in the lab of Vincent Pernay. He will talk today about the role of NOGO-A in, um, in visual deficits induced by retinal injury. Before Julius's talk, I will give a short introduction. Please let me highlight that throughout this event, you can ask questions and we will have time to answer and discuss your questions at the end. A quick word about Striatech. Striatech is a dynamic biotech company from Tübingen, Germany. We specialize in the development of neuroscience testing tools, in particular for vision research. The Striatech founders are all experienced neuroscientists in the field of vision research. When you do biomedical experiments in animal models, one challenge always is to quantify disease, the disease you're working on, and to evaluate the effectiveness of potential new treatments. In vision research, you want to be able to quantify the visual abilities of your animals. This is where Striatech's Optodrum can help, and we will see this in Julius's talk. The Optodrum takes advantage of the optomotor reflex. The optomotor reflex is a visual reflex that makes the animal follow global motion in the environment. Experimentally, you can evoke the optomotor reflex with a rotating stripe pattern surrounding the animal, as seen here. This particular visual stimulus can be adjusted to test the animal's visual abilities. When you make the stripes thinner, the optomotor reflex is eventually not triggered anymore and you have found the animal's visual acuity threshold. Similarly, by adjusting the contrast of the stripe pattern, you can determine the animal's contrast sensitivity threshold. A typical acuity threshold of a health, of a healthy mouse is around 0.4 to 0.5 cycles per degree. One cycle refers to a pair of one black stripe and one white stripe. So for example, when you display 18 cycles around the animal, like in the animation shown here on the left, that is 18 cycles per 360 degrees or a resolution of 0.05 cycles per degree. In general, a higher number for visual acuity means that the vision of the animal is better. Motor measurements have several advantages. Because it is a reflex, there is no training required and any naive animal can be tested right away. Second, the animal does not need to be restrained, nor does it require anesthesia or surgery. The animals can be followed longitudinally over many days or even weeks with a stress-free test. The reflex exists at the time of eye opening. It is therefore possible to characterize and follow the animal's vision, even for early onset diseases. One can easily explore both visual acuity and contrast sensitivity, and all of that is fully automated with our Optodrum. Because of these many advantages, vision testing with our Optodrum can be easily incorporated into a comprehensive testing regime, and you will see examples for this today. There is one aspect in particular that I want to highlight today, namely how useful it is that one can do longitudinal experiments. I have taken this diagram from Julius's presentation and he will tell you all about the underlying science. What is plotted here is the visual acuity of mice on the vertical axis, measured over many days, more than three weeks, at time point zero days, marked by, marked by the vertical arrow, there was an intervention, the retina has been injured, and you can see how visual acuity declines very rapidly. But you can also see the recovery over time. The different lines and colors in this plot represent different strengths of injury and different ways to support recovery. What I want, what I want to point out is the ease 
with which it is possible to monitor, monitor disease progression, both the injury and the recovery, over a tight temporal raster, even daily. And importantly, you can quantify the differences between your different interventions. With this introduction, I want to welcome today's speaker, Julius Bayer Zomba. Julius studied cellular biology in Marseille, in France, where he received his bachelor in 2009 and his master's in 2011 with a specialization in neurodevelopment. After that, he worked with Sigrid Löwel in Göttingen, Germany for a couple of years before beginning his doctoral studies at the Université Laval in Quebec in Canada. Last month, he successfully completed his PhD. His work concentrated on retinal injury and recovery, in particular on the role of NOGO A. I'm very much looking forward to hearing about this work. Thanks again, Julius, for presenting here today at the Striatech Journal Club. Before you start, Julius, let me remind the audience that you will be able to ask questions throughout the event and also to give a thumbs up to other questions. A quick word about asking questions, because the user interface can be a bit confusing. When you want to ask a question, the cursor by default is in the name field. Giving your name is optional, but you have to click into the question field before you start typing your question. If you do not click into the question field first, you will accidentally type your questions into the name field. The Q&A panel on the right will stay available for a couple of days after this live event. So if you are currently watching a recording of the event and the Q&A is still available, please make sure to enter your question and your name so that, we, so that we can back to you with the answer. So we are very much looking forward to your questions and a nice discussion at the end of this talk. Uh, Julius, please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you, uh, Thomas. Let me start this. I hope you can see the. Uh... Yes, everything is good. Please go ahead. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being present for this uh, presentation. So this work uh, was part of my PhD that uh, started in 2016 and was under the supervision of Dr. Vincent Perne. And uh, so it's um, by the title, The Role of Nogo A in Visual Deficits uh, Induced by Retinal Injury. And uh, so without further ado, uh, let's dive right into it. So uh, the retina is part of the central nervous system that is responsible for the, uh, for the collection, the processing and the transmission of uh, visual information. So when light comes into the retina, it traverses through to the photoreceptors, whereby it elicits the generation of um, uh, electrical signals that are propagated through the bipolar cells to the retinal ganglion cells. So these uh, horizontal and amacrine cells here, uh, these uh, perform an intermediate and lateral uh, processing of this information as it passes through. And uh, the axons of these retinal ganglion cells uh, form the optic nerve that transmit these signals to the visual and uh, non-visual nuclei uh, of the brain. So in most central nervous system pathologies, uh, the, uh, the results uh, of, uh, of which is uh, neurodegeneration are often uh, idiopathic. But one mechanism that uh, stands out is uh, excitotoxicity and glutamate excitotoxicity. So in uh, ocular pathologies, the loss of uh, retinal ganglion cells uh, through this, uh, this process uh, is rampant and uh, this can be seen in glaucoma or diabetic retinopathy. Likewise, in uh, pathologies like uh, Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, there is uh, 
a loss of these uh, neurons as the disease progresses, and one of uh, the mechanisms is uh, glutamate excitotoxicity. And so, this glutamate excitotoxicity happens uh, when there is uh, the overactivation of uh, uh, NMDA receptors. Uh, this leads to, to the opening of uh, the channel and the entry of a massive uh, quantity of calcium ions, which leads to the activation of apoptotic and uh, necrotic uh, pathways. So, uh, ma for many years, scientists have used this, uh, this uh, uh, excitotoxicity as a model for these uh, neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, in uh, the ocular, uh, when you are, you are looking at ocular pathologies, most scientists have used uh, huge amounts of, uh, huge, huge concentrations of NMDA, which in turn leads to uh, the elimination of huge amount of uh, retinal cells. And so in my project, what we were looking for, because we are, we are studying the, the recovery of these, uh, uh, of uh, visual functions, uh, we are looking, we were looking for lower concentrations that could induce uh, limited uh, retinal injuries and uh, this could be used to study uh, the, the, the visual functions. Uh, likewise, one of the, 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 um, uh, the processes or the uh, uh, fundamental uh, mechanisms that uh, are involved in neurodegeneration is inflammation. So this is uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the activation of uh, the immune system uh, to uh, insult in the brain. So uh, when uh, there is uh, trauma like in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Alzheimer's disease or in other neurodegenerative diseases, there is the production of uh, uh, cytokines or uh, damage or pathogen uh, markers that activate uh, immune cells like uh, the, the microglia or other cells that are sensitive to this, like the astrocytes. So this uh, activates them and this activation leads to the production of other, uh, um, the production of cytokines that will recruit more of the immune cells and also the production of uh, neurotrophic protective factors that are going to be uh, important in the resolving of this, uh, this uh, trauma. And this microglia now change uh, conformation so that they can phagocyze, uh, phagotize this, uh, the debris of uh, dying and dead cells and clear up this, uh, this uh, uh, injury site so that the healing can take place. However, when this uh, uh, inflammation uh, goes on for a long time, this can exacerbate the disease and cause uh, even more damage. Uh, in uh, the, the, the current therapies that are used in uh, the, the ocular diseases, uh, such as in glaucoma, most of them are geared towards just the symptom management. So like in, uh, in glaucoma, the, 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 the management of intraocular pressure by either using of blocker, uh, beta blockers that increase the outflow of aqua's humor or prostaglandin uh, analogs that um, uh, increase this outflow or the use of uh, trabeculotomy whereby there is the artificial, there is the uh, making of artificial uh, drainage uh, using lasers. And this has been used in both uh, hypertensive and normotensive glaucoma. And uh, in uh, the case of diabetic retinopathy, there is the use of photocoagulation whereby uh, it is uh, the, the cauterizing of uh, bleeding um, vessels in the retina or a vitrotomy whereby this uh, vitreous is, uh, is removed. So the, 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 the vitreous that is laden with blood and other uh, leakage materials is uh, mechanically removed. And so these therapies are really uh, invasive, first of all. Uh, they do not um, uh, address the, the loss of vision or uh, the, 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 the inflammation, inflammation uh, part of these diseases. And so in my project, what we are, we are, um, uh, we were uh, uh, putting forward was that 
the neutralization of no-go air could be a, a potential uh, alternative therapy. And so, uh, just a brief uh, presentation of no-go air. It is the, 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 uh, a, a member of the reticulum 4 family, uh, which is a neuronal uh, growth inhibitor. It is highly expressed in uh, glial cells and some subsets of neurons. It is implicated in uh, the control of memory formation. Uh, likewise, it uh, inhibits uh, uh, ex uh, axonal regeneration, uh, cell migration, and angiogenesis. And so how this works is uh, when NOGO A binds to its uh, respective uh, receptors, so NGR1 or uh, S1PR2, uh, there is the activation of the raw rock pathway, which downstream leads uh, uh, to the destabilization of these actin filaments. So recently we have seen in uh, pathologies like uh, spinal cord injury, whereby they, they in, uh, in research the use of uh, action, uh, function blocking antibodies. Uh, when these are administered, we see that there is uh, function recovery in mice. And uh, even uh, right now there is uh, this work is in uh, the, the second phase of clinical trials, and this has shown uh, really promising um, results. Likewise, in stroke, uh, uh, ischemic stroke, uh, the administration of uh, function blocking antibody that neutralizes the, 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 uh, the function of NOGO A has shown promising results. And uh, as of making this uh, PowerPoint, uh, there is uh, talk of uh, starting uh, uh, phase one clinical trials. In the retina, uh, NOGO A is highly expressed in uh, Mueller glia and to some extent, as you can see here, uh, retinal ganglion cells. And uh, this uh, polarization points uh, to uh, uh, homeostatic uh, function of this, uh, this uh, uh, protein NOGO A although this has not uh, been uh, elucidated. So our hypothesis were, first, NOGO A may inhibit uh, visual recovery after retinal injury, and that uh, when you neutralize this NOGO A, we might improve a visual recovery after the, the retina has been uh, injured. And so our objectives were first to characterize uh, the structural and functional changes that arose from uh, NMDA-induced excitotoxicity in the retina, so this one was to um, uh, was to, uh, to to show that our model uh, worked, so validate the model. Uh, the second objective was to investigate the effects of systemic ablation of NOGO A in the visual uh, in visual function recovery. So this was uh, by use of knockout animals, and uh, thirdly, investigate the effects of acute and localized uh, uh, NOGO A neutralization. So this one is right in, in the retina on visual uh, recovery after the retinal injury. And so to do this, we had this following experimental uh, approaches. So the retina was going to be injured uh, by the use of uh, 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 NMDA injections in the posterior chamber of the eye, so in different concentrations. And then neutralization of NOGO A was either by knockout animals in the uh, systemic um, approach or uh, the use of function blocking antibody so that this one was for the uh, acute uh, localized um, uh, blockade of NOGO A. And then we had uh, several uh, tests. So for the, uh, the visual acuity test, we used the opto uh, optokinetic reflex. Uh, for retinal activity, we used electroretinography, and for visual cortex activity, we used uh, we measured local field potentials in the V1 of these uh, these mice. And then for the anatom anatomical analysis, we used uh, immunofluorescence on either uh, retinal cryosections or retinal flat mounts. And lastly, uh, we used molecular analysis. Um, by use of uh, the QRT PCR or Western blotting. So for for these uh, methods that we use, I'm going to come back and explain them a little bit more as we go on in the in the presentation. So for our first objective to uh, validate our model by characterizing uh, the structural and functional changes that arose from uh, administration of NMDA 
uh, to induce excitotoxicity toxicity in the retina, uh, we first started by measuring the visual acuity of our animals. Uh, so we used the optokinetic model. And as uh, Thomas has, has shown us before, uh, this is a simple way of measuring uh, the, the visual acuity of the, of the animal. So the animal is placed on this platform and is presented uh, on these uh, four screens uh, with the moving creating. And so here we have a, a, a small video of the same. So uh, this, this system allows for, for the measurement of uh, the, vi uh, the visual acuity of the animal or the uh, control sensitivity of the same uh, for each eye separately. And uh, the, 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 uh, the advantages of this, uh, this uh, system has already been uh, uh, shown by Thomas before. And so we used this system to measure the acuity of our animals. And so here we have uh, a graph of special frequency threshold uh, against time in days. And as we can see here, there is three distinct groups that, that can, be, uh, can be observed. So the first group of either uh, the control PBS or low uh, doses of uh, NMDA, whereby there was uh, either none or uh, a small uh, decrease in visual ac uh, acuity of the animals, which was followed by a recovery. The second group of the intermediate dose of NMDA, whereby uh, there was a sharp decrease in visual acuity, uh, followed after several days with uh, a recovery that was not complete. And a third group of, uh, of these mice with a higher dose of novo A, whereby there was no uh, recovery even after 19 days of, of follow up. And so uh, we could conclude that NMDA could induce reversible and irreversible uh, visual loss. And this was dependent on the concentration of NMDA that we administered. And so for the following part of the of the presentation, I will be concentrated in this uh, concentrated in these three groups. We also checked on the uh, retinal activity through electroretinography. So this is the measurement of uh, retinal electric activity generated by uh, the retinal cells in response to light stimuli. And the readout for this uh, this uh, uh, method is a waveform which. Uh, is uh, consistent of uh, the, uh, the initial uh, negative deflection, so the A wave, which is uh, which corresponds to the activity of photoreceptors, and uh, a following positive uh, deflection, uh, which uh, corresponds to uh, Mueller and bipolar cell activities. And so here we have um, a representative waves from our three groups. So, and what you can notice is that only at the high dose of NMDA uh, was there a, a, a drop, a significant drop in the B wave of, of, the, of, the, uh, of this electroretinography. And uh, quantitatively, you can see that this drop was significant. And so we concluded that the high dose of NMDA uh, did selectively reduce uh, ERG B wave amplitudes. And uh, we also checked on the structural uh, changes. So this was done by staining uh, uh, the retinal cells. So retinal ganglion cells were stained with RBPMS, which stands for RNA binding protein with multiple splicing. Uh, we stained the ganglion cells and amacrine, uh, A2 amacrine cells with cardiac retinin. And uh, choline acetyl transferase was used to stain starburst amacrine cells. And so here we have um, uh, representative uh, sections of uh, retinal, sec um, uh, retinal sections from the three, uh, three groups. And what we can observe here is that there is a gradient of cell loss as the concentration of NMDA increases. And quantitatively, you can see that uh, RBFMS uh, positive ganglion cells, so the retinal ganglion cells were most affected uh, because even at, at the low dose of NMDA, so at 0 0.5 nanomoles of NMDA, there was about 30% uh, decrease in retinal cells and up to 80% uh, decrease at uh, the high dose of NMDA. And we can see that uh, neither CAT nor carbonatitin 
uh, carotin in positive uh, cells were affected at uh, were affected only at the high dose of uh, NMDA. And so uh, we concluded that uh, this loss of uh, cells could be correlated uh, to what we saw earlier when uh, there was uh, a difference in uh, recovery in the cells. And so this uh, validated uh, our model to, to continue. Our subject, second objective was to investigate uh, the systemic ablation of no-go air uh, on visual recovery after the uh, injury in the, in the retina. And so in this, we used knockout animals. So as previously shown, we checked on the, the, their visual acuity using the octodrome system. And so here we have uh, the same graph of spatial frequency against time. And what we can see here is that animals that had low doses of NMDA, so 0 0.05 uh, nanomoles of NMDA, uh, in both knockout and wall type animals, they had this uh, drop in visual acuity, which was followed by a gradual uh, recovery. And what you can notice is that uh, wild type animals had a faster and more complete recovery than uh, wild type animals. Likewise, uh, when uh, the, the, the dose of NMDA was increased to 0 0.5, we can see that there was a sharp decrease in visual acuity, which was followed by um, a recovery. But also you can notice that knockout animals recovered uh, much faster and more complete than wild type animals that took longer and their recovery was lesser than for the wild, uh, the knockout animals. And lastly, when the dose was higher, uh, neither knockout animals nor wild type animals showed any recovery even after uh, 90 days of follow up. And so this uh, led to the conclusion that no go deletion could increase visual, uh, visual, uh, visual function recovery. Uh, after uh, NMDA induced uh, cell death. We also checked on the retinal activity of these animals. And so here we have um, uh, representative graphs from animals before and after NMDA uh, injection and uh, their quantifications. And what we can notice is that there is no um, difference in the animals before or after uh, NMDA uh, excitotoxic injury in the retina. And so uh, this leads to the conclusion that no go -away ablation does not affect uh, uh, ERG functions, at least at this uh, dose of NMDA. And so lastly, we checked on uh, the, the, the visual uh, cortex activity by measuring uh, local field potentials. So this was done by uh, lowering a uh, tungsten electrode in uh, different uh, uh, depths of the, v, uh, the V1 and uh, recording activity uh, that was evoked by a light uh, st uh, stimuli that was presented to the corresponding eye. And so here we have representative graphs that uh, representative waves that were obtained uh, from this, uh, these measurements and uh, we divided them into two components. So uh, the, uh, the P1, excuse me. So the P1N1, which uh, stands for the uh, primary retinogenic uh, component, and the P2N2, which is uh, correspond to the secondary retinogenic component. So these ones correspond to the N95 and P100 in human uh, visual evoked potentials. And so here we have uh, representative graphs uh, from our two groups. So the wild type with NMDA excitotoxicity and the knockout. And uh, so here we have their quantifications. And what we can notice is that uh, only at uh, the N2 latency was there a significant difference between uh, the wild types and the knockouts. And this uh, could, uh, sh uh, could mean that uh, no go ahead deletion in the uh, no go ahead deletion improved uh, v1 uh, activity after uh, nmda induced uh, injury and so in conclusion to this part we can say that uh, the neutralization of no go air using chronic ablation improved visual recovery after uh, partial retinal injury 
and that uh, this chronic uh, neutralization uh, does not affect visual improvement if this injury was extensive. And lastly, neither uh, retinal activity nor retinal cell survival is affected by uh, no-go A chronic neutralization, but uh, signal propagation in the V1 seems to be improved after this uh, partial retinal injury. And so this and uh, other data has been uh, published already in the uh, uh, journal Cell Death and Disease uh, in the year 2018. So for third objective, that was to investigate the effects of uh, acute and localized Nogoi uh, neutralization. Uh, we had this uh, experimental timeline. So our, we followed our animals for about five days to have the baseline visual acuity. Uh, this was followed by the injection of NMDA at different concentrations. And two days later, uh, we uh, treated the animals either using uh, our test uh, antibody that is 11C7 or a control IgG. And then the animals were longitudinally followed for about 41 days, which was followed then by the recording of electroretinography. And a day later, the, uh, the animals were sacrificed and uh, their retinas uh, collected for uh, neuronal cell survival analysis. So like for, for the first uh, part of the presentation, we checked on the visual acuity of our animals. And here we have the same graph of uh, special frequency sensitivity in uh, uh, over time in, in days. And what we can see here is that animals that oh, had uh, 0 0.5 nanomoles of, uh, of NMDA induced excitotoxicity and that were treated with 11C7 antibody showed a higher uh, and faster recovery of visual functions as compared to animals that were only treated with the uh, control IgG. And quantitatively, this was uh, significant. Uh, however, animals that were treated with that uh, were induced had. Uh, uh, excitotoxicity induced by a higher concentration of NMDA, so here two nanomoles of, uh, of uh, NMDA. Uh, even though they showed uh, a higher uh, visual acuity recovery than control animals, uh, this was um, uh, was covered by the variabilities in, this, in these animals, even though uh, there was this tendency. And so we could not see any uh, significant difference in these two groups. And so uh, we could conclude that uh, the intravitreal uh, administration of uh, noble A function blocking antibody uh, really could enhance visual recovery. We also checked now on what happens to, to the, 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 uh, the propagation in the V1 as we have seen uh, earlier. So uh, here we have uh, the same um, um, latency, uh, the N2 latency. Uh, as we see, uh, as we saw in knockout animals, and here we have uh, uh, in animals that were treated with either the control uh, antibody or 11C7, and we can see here that there is uh, a significant difference in these uh, two latencies, and so uh, this leads to the conclusion that no go neutralization improves uh, V1 uh, neuronal activity after uh, retinal injury. We also checked on cell survival. So here we have a representation of an, an intact uh, retina and uh, retinas that uh, of animals that were uh, treated uh, with the IgG or 11C7 after 0 0.5 nanomoles of NMDA excitotoxicity and animals that were treated with uh, the, these antibodies after a higher dose of NMDA. And what you can see here that uh, Apart from uh, the higher loss of cells in the higher dose of, uh, doses of NMDA, there was no difference uh, between uh, the animals that were treated with 11C7 or uh, the IgG. And so uh, this shows us that 11C7 does not affect a, uh, the, the, the cell survival of these retinal ganglion cells after excitotoxic injury. But so up to now, we have checked on uh, the structural and functional changes, but what happens uh, molecularly? And so what we wanted to see was 
the, the changes in gene, and so we did uh, in the in the genes in the retina. And so we did a gene uh, screen uh, at uh, three days after NMDA excitotoxicity and uh, just one day after antibody treatment. And what you can see here is that uh, there was a, a, a higher expression of uh, this uh, uh, the no-go A uh, mRNA in the in the in the in the retina. Likewise, there was a higher um, expression of uh, its respective uh, receptors. Uh, we can also see that uh, inflammation, uh, inflammatory cytokines and uh, monocyte um, expression patterns were also higher uh, in animals that were treated with the IgG as compared to animals that uh, were treated with 11C7. And uh, we can see that gliosis, uh, gliosis was also higher and uh, some of, uh, of the other cytokine family um, patterns were also higher in IgG than in 11 treated animals. When we checked on this uh, after seven days, uh, most of these uh, expressions were back to uh, uh, normal, so no difference between IgG and 11 treated animals. But notice that TNF-alpha, which is a, a highly potent uh, uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine, is still highly depressed in uh, animals that were treated with 11C7 than IgG uh, treated animals. And so this uh, shows us that 11C7 uh, can exert a potent and protracted anti-inflammatory effect in the retina. We also now checked on the expression of the protein. And to do this, we checked uh, in the vitreous of the animals. And here we can see uh, that uh, as compared to IgG treated animals, uh, their, their vitreous had more um, uh, TNF alpha uh, trimers than animals that were treated with 11C7. And this uh, is significantly uh, different. Likewise, when we checked on uh, cytokines that were stained with eBayer1, uh, in animals that were treated with 11C7, uh, they showed less uh, TNF alpha. Uh, positive uh, um, monocytes than animals that were only treated with uh, the IgG. And so this uh, led to the conclusion that 11C7 uh, repressed the microglial secretion of uh, TNF alpha in the vitreous of these uh, this injured mice. But what happens in the in the retina? And so we did the same. So staining the, anim uh, the, 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 the retinas uh, of animals that were treated with AGG or 11C7 uh, with either eBay1 uh, for the um, uh, this uh, monocytes or microglia, uh, TNF alpha and uh, CD68 to show uh, this active microglia. And here we have uh, the, the um, quantifications. And so we can notice that animals that were treated with 11C7 uh, and intact animals uh, showed uh, no difference as compared to animals that were treated with the IgG that had uh, a higher uh, um, expression of TNF alpha. However, uh, there was no difference between uh, the IgG or 11C7 animals uh, in the uh, when when we checked on uh, the, 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 uh, the the cells that were positive for ABR1 and this shows that uh, 11 7 can uh, really strongly reduce the TNF alpha expression in these cells, but has only moderate effects on, uh, on the density of microglia in, this, uh, in these retinas. And so, up to now, we have checked all these things in, in our mice, but what happens in humans? So, uh, with our collaborators, uh, we checked on the vitreous of, uh, of uh, the vitreous that was donated from uh, uh, human donors, uh, either that was suffering from diabetic or proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or uh, uh, patients that were non-diabetic. And what you can see here is that there is a high expression of no A. And so when we stained uh, uh, the retinas from, uh, uh, from donors, you can see that there is a higher expression of no A in, uh, in the retina, 
And notice that in uh, this retina of a diabetic retinopathy patient, there is um, a thinning of the retina, which could mean that uh, there is uh, uh, cell loss. And so this is just uh, uh, qualitative uh, work, which needs to be uh, worked upon more. But now, for now, we can say that uh, no-go air protein expression uh, seems to be increased in both the vitreous and uh, the retina of patients that have diabetic or diabetic retinopathy. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, the acute uh, neutralization of no-go air using this function uh, blocking antibody uh, really improved visual recovery after this partial injury and that uh, the acute neutralization uh, reduce the expression of inflammatory cytokines uh, that were produced after the, the injury. Uh, as we saw in the, in the, in the knockout animals, uh, there was neither uh, change in uh, 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 retinal activity nor cell survival, but uh, there seems to be a signal propagation improvement uh, in this, um, uh, this uh, knockout uh, these animals that were treated with uh, the 11-7 after this partial injury. And lastly, uh, it seems that uh, no-go A is highly expressed in uh, in human diseased, um, uh, human retinas that have these ocular pathologies. And so this work and more has been uh, published in the uh, journal Cell Death and Disease uh, that uh, was published last year. Uh, 2020. And so in general, this work uh, can constitute uh, preclinical results uh, that can be used for study of, um, of human uh, ocular pathologies. And that uh, given that there is already studies to, to uh, using antibodies that uh, can be repurposed, uh, we think that uh, this, uh, these antibodies can also be used uh, in the study of treatment of these uh, pathologies that are affecting uh, the, the visual system. And so in to recapitulate all this, um, either the use of genetic or immune neutralization of Nogo A has been shown by other teams to affect cell migration or uh, plasticity in the CNS. Uh, here we show that it also affects yeah, neuroinflammation, and all this leads to uh, the visual function recovery. So I would like to acknowledge uh, the members of uh, Dr. Penes' team. So Dr. Jolie, Dr. Rodriguez, uh, Emily, uh, Sabrina, and all these other teams that have been uh, uh, instrumental in the realization of this project, especially uh, Dr. Martin Schwab, who uh, provided us with the antibodies and the uh, mice, and also Naomi Jodi, who started this project. And also uh, the funding bodies, uh, who without uh, their, their support, we could not have uh, done this project. Thank you. Julius, uh, thank you so much for your for your presentation. That was really nice. And I would also like to thank the audience for posting many interesting and, and good questions. And uh, I suggest, Julius, we dive right in, right? So um, uh, let's start with a general question, and that is, uh, do you know what is the function of no-go A in the normal adult retina, because you presented it as the evil player in, in all of these diseases, but what is it yeah. there for? So in, in, in the in the retina, no go A is um, uh, has a lot of function. As, as I said, it uh, probably has homeostatic uh, functions because it is uh, highly expressed in Mueller cells, and we know that Mueller cells are uh, the, the the homeostatic uh, uh, cells in the retina. So they 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 uh, uh, they regulate a lot of these processes in the retina. And so uh, we think that uh, it has homeostatic uh, functions in the retina. Uh, it is also um, one of the, uh, the, the proteins that um, have uh, 
kind of uh, it's um, when the, when the uh, the circuits in the retina matures, uh, they have to be to be fixed so that there is no um, uh, kind of aberrant uh, growth. So uh, when animals uh, move from uh, juvenile to, to 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 adults, the plasticity in the CNS and in the retina uh, reduces, and so uh, Nogo A plays a major role in this. Uh, in the stopping of this plasticity, so maturing the, 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 the circuits in the retina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question is, uh, you showed this slide at the beginning about the localization of NOGO A in the mouse retina. Does that gene change after injury? Do you know that? Do, have you tested? Uh, normally, uh, there is a lot of um, uh, kind of shedding of uh, of uh, no air into the vitreous so there is a little bit less of no air but there is more of gliosis but uh, the 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 the, um, the general expression uh, even though it's a little bit less is still uh, in the same in the same proportions so a little bit less in the Mueller cells and even more in the in the uh, retinal ganglion cells that express it okay mm -hmm. Then there's a question from somebody that read your paper. <laughs> um, they, they write that uh, in the IgG control group, uh, you showed improvement in the OMT, if you could elaborate on those findings. Could, could you could you read that again? Yes, uh, it says according to the speaker's publication from 2020, mm -hmm. the IgG control group for the anti -no antibody also showed substantial improvements in the OMT. Could you please elaborate on that finding? Um, I'm trying to see where I got quickly. So th this is uh, about um, uh, the the, um, uh, the the improvement in um, visual acuity. Uh, I I, be I believe so. It says OMT, but it's even, I probably means OMR or OKT. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, <laughs> so so, so norma normally there is uh, there is um, um, according to the to, to the dose that we use there is uh, an inherent uh, recovery of the retina. So mm -hmm. it doesn't go back to uh, to the same same level as it was before the injury, mm -hmm. but there is some improvement. So what we think is that even though there is uh, the, this um, uh, cell death in the retina, there are other cells that are uh, probably not dead, but non-functional. And after a couple of days, uh, they recover and uh, they, they they start to function, maybe not at 100%, but they do function. So there is uh, there is some certain recovery, but not full recovery. Mm -hmm. And so what what uh, uh, in in uh, in the project what you wanted to see was uh, does neutralization of Nogoe increase this uh, recovery threshold that we see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the next question is a bit related about the recovery. So it, it asks about the recovery in the control animals, not in the knockout animals, in mm -hmm. your intermediate doses of NMDA. What you've showed is that you get a very sharp drop of visual acuity. Yeah. And after about 12 days or so, uh, yeah. there's a rather homogeneous recovery, homogeneous between different animals because you had very little, uh, very low error bars. What yeah. happens after 12 days? Why why is there this spontaneous recovery? So th this this that is a very very good question. So what we think is that um, the, it's it's kind of uh, uh, the, the 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 end of uh, the, the the shock period that there is uh, in the in the retina. So the 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 the, um, the microglia has moved in and uh, has taken out the the, the um, 
uh, the, the debris of uh, dead cells and all that. Uh, there is um, a kind of um, reconnection in animals that have uh, uh, that have been treated with 11C7, so uh, the, the, the retina is more plastic to reconnect. Uh, there is less um, uh, TNF alpha that could uh, increase the the, the, um, the inflammation. So this uh, this also helps in uh, in um, in recovery uh, as compared to the, the 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 IgG animals that even though there is uh, this uh, this um, um, uh, the activity of microglia that has cleared the space and uh, the, 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 the cells that are there do not have this extra uh, push from uh, from uh, neutralization of noble air to to now have a higher uh, a higher uh, recovery so it's it's kind of uh, a host of good things now that uh, after inflammation there is the recovery but now with uh, noble air not being there uh, there is more recovery in uh, uh, in this 11.7 treated than IgG. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, yeah, and then there was a question about uh, treatment of uh, diabetic retinopathy in, in patients, in humans. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah. if your antibody treatment uh, ever becomes a real treatment, mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you think, when would be the best time to start that early before retinal degeneration? Or even, or is it is, is it even good later after retinopathy is evident? So uh, yeah, that's 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 an excellent question. So right right now, um, it's um, it it has been shown that uh, Nogo A can can mm -hmm. can be uh, administered later and uh, still has still have this uh, the function uh, regaining um, action. So uh, I think in the team of Dr. Schwab, they showed that when um, a, a, an animal is injured and left for a couple of days, they can still recover. But uh, in, our, in our study, it seems that if the, there is uh, uh, a higher uh, retinal damage, then the, 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 the recovery is limited. So it would be best that, uh, first of all, uh, diabetic retinopathy, uh, di di diabetes is managed so that uh, there is uh, less loss of uh, these retinal cells. And then uh, the sooner the treatment is done, the better to preserve uh, the function and to regain the function that has been taken. Mm -hmm. But then if the treatment started, uh, started later, there still can be some recovery even though it is going to be minimum. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's a question about the cellular mechanism that's behind the action of 11C7. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, what, what do you think is going on? Why is there visual recovery? Is it because, because the, the, the surviving RGCs form new synapses or, or what, what, what is happening? So that, that, that is one of the, of the questions that uh, we are still to elucidate. Uh, we think for, for, for the time being, we think it is um, a combination of different uh, positive uh, actions. So like uh, the, the reduction of um, uh, the, the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, we think that um, uh, given that uh, when there is uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this damage in the retina, there is shedding of uh, no-go A that can go work uh, a little bit further from where there is the injury, excuse me. And when uh, these um, uh, these fragments, these active fragments of no-go A go, uh, they, they can be internalized and have their 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 um, action a little bit further from the retina. So uh, we think that there is uh, transport of these fragments to other parts of the, the visual system. So when 11C7 uh, uh, is administered, uh, it sequestrates the, 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 the fragments that are already in the, in the vitreous. So uh, the, the, the action of this Nogoe is already uh, diminished. And we know that Nogoe also is um, 
uh, affects the migration of microglia to, to these, uh, these um, uh, injury sites so that they, they, they can be activated. And so active microglia will uh, produce uh, pro inflammatory cytokines. So this, this, uh, this, this action of sequestering no-go A in the retina so that it does not affect other parts of the, uh, the visual system could be one of the reasons why there is uh, uh, recovery. Uh, the, the, the hindering of microglia to produce these uh, inflammatory cytokines could be the other, but also given that Nogo A uh, can inhibit uh, the, 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 um, the growth of, uh, of axons and uh, neutrites uh, in, this, uh, in the central nervous system, we think also uh, neutralizing it, uh, there is uh, a reconnection of the network. So it can be a combination of all these three. So for, the, for right now, we know that uh, microglia and inflammation is affected, uh, but we are still to elucidate if uh, the network is uh, reconnects well, or uh, there is uh, the hindrance of transport of uh, of this uh, noble A to other parts of the uh, central nervous system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have time left for one or maybe two more questions. Uh, one question was the noble A knockout mice. Do mm -hmm. they have any other phenotypes? Uh, the, the, so this this is a, is a fin, is a is a mo model that has been uh, created. I think uh, it has ten or twelve years, and so the, the the mice do not, at least what I remember, they do not have uh, they do not exhibit any difference uh, with uh, with, the, with the normal wild type mice except that they have a heightened plasticity. So when, when, you, when you check on, uh, on, on, um, on their, like when you use the, 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 the OKR after uh, um, monocular de deprivation or, or other uh, plasticity measures, these mice are, are have heightened plasticity. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's kind of, they, they have that uh, they, they, they can adapt well to, to different um, uh, new stimuli. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I, I think our time our time is up. Uh, so Julius, thank you again so much for uh, for your talk and for the answering of the questions. Yeah. Um, I would also like to thank the audience for for the participation and the great questions. If we did not have time, to answer your specific question, you're, you're welcome to write us an email and uh, us or, or Julius, of course, um, and uh, to get, you know, to get the answers to, to your questions that we didn't have time for. Um, so thanks again. Uh, hope everybody is staying and keeping healthy and uh, goodbye. Thank you.